what about fear? Is it, is it legitimate fear? Is it fear of physical injury? No, it doesn't matter. It's as bad as fear of physical injury. It does the same thing to our bodies and our minds. When I work with race car drivers, I found out what race car drivers are afraid of. They're not afraid of crashing. They're not afraid of equipment. What are they afraid of? Getting lapped. Uh -huh. And being embarrassed. That's it. I'm telling you. They don't talk about dying. They talk about being embarrassed. Double fault enough, it's embarrassing. Yes? Under pressure. And it gets worse, yes? So, what do you do to deal with the fear? Relax your body <coughs> and start taking risks. Putting yourself under pressure and increasing the risk. Instead of playing this first serve safe, go for it. Maybe even the second serve before going for it. Fantastic. In order to make an ace happen, I'm convinced it takes courage. If you serve with fear, it won't be your best. Optimal performance requires courage. I don't know the best players in the world right now. I'm not up on tennis as much as I need to be. But having worked with world class athletes for 20 years, I know that. Most everybody that's successful has a lot of courage. Can you buy that? Under pressure to go for it. it. Takes courage. If you don't go for it, it doesn't work. <laughs> we all know that, yes? And then you feel like the wimp, and then you really feel bad because you did go for it. So my my only option is to go for it. Not stupidly go for it, but certainly wisely go for it and get in the habit of going for it under pressure. And this is what I would encourage you to teach your students. That when they're feeling the pressure to accept the pressure as sports, as why they're doing this, it's excitement. And to develop the mentality that when they feel that, they go for it. And they go for it. And if they don't succeed, you reward them for going for it, for the effort, for getting in the mentality of doing it. They won't be able to do it every time. So, you take risks, shot down the line, time for an ace under pressure, and you keep on, and you come away from them knowing that you did it, you feel better about it. But what I would encourage you and your players to not just allocate it to the tennis court, but you develop a mentality away from the tennis court that you take courageous action. What fear does is it restricts us prevents us from moving, it inhibits us, it prevents us from doing anything worthwhile and tells ourselves not to do it. Don't, don't try an ace now. Don't go down the line with this shot, they'll leave it up. And they do it anyway. The fear is there. The fear doesn't go away at high levels. You just learn how to manage it better and use it for adrenaline and ride the risk wave and enjoy the excitement and that adrenaline and putting that into the serve. Sort of all or nothing. Meaning, if I tell them, just have the courage and go for it, they're gonna go, like Elliot was talking about this boy yesterday, they're gonna try to get winners 10 feet behind the baseline. So, what I'm jotting down here is to take manageable risks. Now, is that fair or is that an oxymoron in this discussion? Manage for, for kids, manageable, safe risks, okay? because you set up an environment where they're free to fail and do it a bunch of times and, and allow the kid at 120% to miss 10 out of 10. And say, good effort, great idea, but we gotta put some in before you put them in the unsafe environment of having them do that in competition. And, and always create positive enforcement. Okay, try that great, now we need to get the service in. So in other words, help them to understand safe versus unsafe in a continuum and they're as much as they can retain. And create, and create that. And don't and ask them not to do that in a big competition when it's not safe to <laughs> bang away at it. And so back to your point, in other words, simulate that under pressure in a systematic way. Yeah. Yeah. Always safe and always with success. Find success in it. To me, 
I can tell you all the points of concentration, right attention to the situation, one thing at a time, and here and now, mental quiet, total absorption in what you're focused on until you're done. That's what concentration is. But it requires energy, massive amounts of energy. And if you go into a tournament tired, by the time you get to the final set, you're probably going to be running on an empty tank. An empty tank set up choking, to me, more than mine does. You just run out of energy, and it's just hard to stay focused, and so your mind drifts a little bit, and then maybe you make a mistake, and you can interpret it as choking. But what I see with players at all levels, and certainly high school kids here, is that they burn a lot of energy away from tournaments and go into games, matches, and tournaments already drained. And, and once the energy drops out, they're done. Focus is gone. I spent, spent the last two years working on a program for high school kids to pass SAT exams, to focus on tests, to not choke on big exams. I spent the last, are incredibly tired. They're yawning a lot. I, I did a program at my house for six high school kids on my couch, and half the way through, half of them fell asleep. 